Hello, and welcome to Let's Talk Nanotech. Today, we will be talking about nanoparticles in your body, and specifically, protein nanoparticle interactions. This presentation was developed by Jennifer Gagner for Nanostructured Materials, a course taught by Professor Richard Siegel at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Nanotechnology is an interesting field because it does not refer to any particular discipline. Rather, it refers to a particular length scale of interest. Below is a measure that demonstrates the difference between one meter and one angstrom, which is one ten billionth of a meter. Let's see if we can frame that in a way which is easier to picture. For anyone who loves dinosaurs, a triceratops is about three meters long, so we'll put that at the large end of the scale. At the other end of the scale, we have a hydrogen atom, which is a main component in a water molecule. That's about 2.4 angstroms in diameter, so quite a bit smaller. In the intermediate space, we have a penny, which is about 2 centimeters or 20 millimeters in diameter, a red blood cell, which is about 6 micrometers in diameter, and then we have a nanoparticle. A nanoparticle is typically defined as any particle having at least one dimension less than 100 nanometers in length. So it's quite a bit smaller than a red blood cell, but a bit larger than a hydrogen atom. It's probably easier to think about this way. If you took a penny and laid it down on its side and covered the surface with nanoparticles, you would have more nanoparticles on the face of the penny than you would all the people on Earth. So as you can imagine, nanoparticles are very small indeed. Nanotechnology is the study of any field that controls matter on the nanometer scale. However, trying to visualize a nanoparticle, as you might guess, is quite difficult. How do you see something which is 5,000 times smaller than the thickness of your hair? For example, the vial shown here contains a solution of gold nanoparticles in water. Notice the red color, very different from the usual color of gold. The color of a gold nanoparticle solution is directly related to the size and shape of the nanoparticle. Gold nanoparticles may be synthesized in many different shapes, including spherical, cubic, rod, and even stars. These particles can be directly imaged using special tools, particularly an electron microscope, which uses electrons to see very small objects. The micrographs shown correspond to spherical, cube, and rod-shaped gold particles. Though nanoparticles are used in sunscreen and some cosmetics, putting nanoparticles inside your body is a bit of a different story. Nanoparticles, as you might recall, are much smaller than the average human cell. This means that usually a nanoparticle can be absorbed into a cell pretty easily. Thus, by attaching things to the particle like medicine, it's possible to target illnesses like cancer directly. Seen below is a schematic of a human cell. It's encased by a cell wall and has a nucleus which contains the genetic material. The inside of the cell is referred to as a cytoplasm. In order for the nanoparticle to deliver its medicine, it must enter the cytoplasm. It does this by entering the zone. Once inside, it's able to break up and then release the medicine cytoplasm. Some nanoparticles have interesting properties, such as heating when exposed to laser light. In this scenario, a person could shine a laser on the nanoparticle, which passes harmlessly through your skin, and heats the nanoparticle, ultimately destroying the tumor. Obviously, for applications such as these, it is very important that the right cell is targeted and there are no additional side effects. One of the most important factors is determining how a nanoparticle will function in the body when it interacts with proteins. Proteins are biomolecules that are encoded in your DNA. They carry out different functions in each cell, helping to regulate cellular conditions. There are many different kinds, and some of them are about the same size as nanoparticles or smaller. The protein pictured above is called lysozyme, which is important in regulating cell death. Some proteins, called enzymes, catalyze biological reactions inside the body. They do this because of their specific shape. You can think of an enzyme as a lock, which only fits a specific key. This is also a picture of lysozyme, highlighting its secondary structure and composition. It has been shown 
that the size and curvature of a nanoparticle directly affects the structure of proteins it comes in contact with. For example, if the particle is small with a highly curved surface, it is difficult for a globular protein to make contact with the surface over multiple points. This reduces the interaction between the protein and the particle surface, helping the protein maintain its shape. For larger particles, you can see that it is easier for the proteins to spread out on the surface. And for even larger particles, there may be unfavorable protein-protein interactions, which lead to a further loss in structure. For enzymes, it's also very important about how the protein binds to the particle. If the enzyme should bind so that the active site, or lock, is facing the particle surface, it will be impossible for the key to bind to the active site. In another scenario, if the protein binds to the surface and spreads out, losing much of its structure, the shape of the active site may be changed. This would prevent the key molecule from binding and would result in an inactive enzyme. There are many potential side effects of putting nanoparticles in the body, and they are not fully understood. Here are three important ones we do know about. It's possible for the particle to interact with the immune system, and if the body recognizes the particle as foreign, it will target the particle for destruction and remove it from the body too quickly, potentially before it finishes its purpose. It's also possible that the particles can aggregate inside the body with other particles or with proteins, forming dangerous clots or other obstructions. It is also possible that there would be unfavorable protein-particle interactions. The particle may interact with different proteins in unexpected and uncontrolled ways, causing undesirable side effects. In order to realize the full potential of nanobiomaterials, it is important to fully understand how nanoparticle structure can be tuned to, through different processing techniques to yield specific particle properties. It is then essential to determine how these particle properties affect proteins. For example, it is possible to coat nanoparticles with very water-soluble molecules, as pictured below, preventing the immune system from clearing the nanoparticles from the body too quickly. Nevertheless, there are lots of things left to discover.